In the wake of the killing, some on Norway's left called the fear of Islamization a conspiracy theory. But the victims of Islam are real, and they are mostly Norway's women. They are problems Norway has never faced before. Every woman in Norway does not have full human rights. There are women in this country who are denied their rights by their families, and they live in fear for their lives. At the Red Cross office in Oslo, Monica Berga and Anmar Tistifjeld take calls from Norwegian girls who face honor violence, forced marriage, and genital mutilation. We have girls who call, and we really get this uh, bad feeling in the stomach that something is seriously wrong. Most of the girls tell us that uh, I wouldn't think about it, or I never thought it would happen, because I live in Norway, I have my friends, I go to school, and I never thought it would happen. They not only live in Norway, but they were born in Norway, and they speak Norwegian. But their rights are not protected, and they are controlled by their families. And a lot of them have been uh, threatened or beaten up. And they tell us about a lot of social control. Uh, so when they uh, become like uh, 10, uh, 12 years, they start to following her to school, just to control that she's not have any contact with other boys, because good girls don't do that. Hegge Storhaug was a self-described naive left-wing journalist when an encounter with an immigrant woman changed her life and her career. In 1992, as a journalist, uh, I met a young Norwegian-born uh, Pakistani woman, only 18 years old. And uh, she had been married at gunpoint in Pakistan to a second cousin. And I was so shocked when she said, for example, um, my parents were willing to kill me if I didn't enter this marriage to protect their own honor. Storhaug now works full-time to protect immigrant women and girls from forced marriage, genital mutilation and honor violence. Women, she says, who have been abandoned by the Norwegian government and deprived of their rights as citizens. Like four Norwegian sisters all sent to Gambia for genital mutilation. They were aged three to nine years old. All four were dumped in the village in Gambia, uh, the village of origin of the family. And they were uh, female, gentle, mutilated in the jungle, traditional. They have been stripped from uh, the possibility to become a full member of this society. And we have allowed it. We have allowed it. Storhaug, who works on behalf of the rights of women, has been called a racist and an Islamophobe by the left in Norway. Something else that Muslim immigration appears to have brought to Norway is what some here call a rape epidemic. Recent police statistics showed that in the capital of Oslo, 100% of assault rapes between strangers were committed by immigrant non-Western males, and 9 out of 10 of their victims were native Norwegian women. Some blonde Norwegian women have reportedly begun dyeing their hair black, and many travel only in groups. Kristen Spitznogel is a therapist who has counseled some of the rape victims, and she's been attacked in the Norwegian media for saying what many will not, that the rape problem is primarily Muslim men raping non-Muslim women, and any woman who does not dress modestly and wear the Muslim headscarf could be considered by some Muslim men as fair game. For them, I think, the hijab is a symbolic uh, marker which um, separates the submissive, proper Muslim women from what they see as the Norwegian horse. But when I say horse, I'm really just referring to their own words. This is what they told the journalists. Spitznogel says Norway's left-wing establishment has been blaming the victims because the whole notion that Islamic culture is dangerous to women is very politically incorrect here. Hannah Herland is author of the best-selling book, Alarm, Thoughts on a Culture in Crisis. And not all values, some of them are excellent, but not all values from Islamic countries or cultures are excellent to bring into the European society. And I think many times the Norwegians fear to speak about that in fear of being called a racist. But it's hard to call a Muslim immigrant a racist for speaking out against his fellow Muslims. Walid al Kubezi is a respected Norwegian writer and a Muslim who came from Iraq. He told us he's concerned about radical Islamic elements within the larger Muslim community in Norway. We have a problem. Nobody 
all deny nobody say that we have a big problem but this will give a bad result in the future as in other european cities parts of oslo are now muslim zones and may be subject to sharia law or to the rules of local imams most of the areas where the muslim is majority the norwegian feel that they're not in their country they're not in norway 